Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at electrical fields and charged particles which falls into the electrical fields topic of the AQA A-level physics course. So in today's lesson we're going to try and understand how electric fields can be affected by can affect charged particles sorry. So we're going to firstly define and describe electrical field strength, understand how we can calculate electrical field strength for both uniform and radial fields and then look at detail in the trajectory of moving charged particles as they enter a uniform electrical field, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.7.3.2, electrical field strength in the electrical fields module in AQA A-level physics. So basically, when a charged particle will move through an electrical field, it will interact with that electrical field. So let's consider a uniform field. Now a uniform field will be produced between two parallel plates with the potential difference between them. Now we know this this is a uniform field as the field lines are equally spaced out and there's the same field line density throughout this particular diagram. Now the field lines point in the direction a positive charge would move if it was placed in that field so it's going to be pointing towards the more negative plate. Now in this example it is pointing towards a negatively charged plate but it doesn't have to be that in the case it's just the more negative out of the two plates. So the potential difference across the two plates that will produce this field is actually actually going to be 800 volts because the difference between minus 200 and 600 from either plate is 800. Now if we place a charged particle in the field it will experience a force due to being in that particular field. That's due to the definition of the electrical field. It's a region of space where a charged object will experience a non-contact force. Now the magnitude of the force can be calculated using the electrical field strength equations. Now this can cause the object to a accelerate in a particular direction and this is the mechanism in a, how a particle accelerator will accelerate particles. So if we use the equation F equals MA we know that the acceleration of the charged particle is going to be F over M. Now this means it will actually be dependent on the charge of the particle because we can calculate F as F equals EQ because we know E the electrical field strength is F over Q and it's also going to be dependent on the mass of the particle. So this means means the acceleration of a charged particle is going to be directly proportional to the charge of that particle. It means that the acceleration of the charged particle is going to be inversely proportional to the uh, mass of the particle, or you could also think of it that the acceleration and the charge to mass ratio of the particle are directly proportional to each other. So the only two factors that will affect the acceleration of a charged particle in an electrical field are the charge of the particle and the mass of the particle, which you can combine to be the charge to mass ratio. Now, if we consider a particle which is already moving in an electrical field, the particle will wish to continue in that particular direction of motion, that is inertia, it's from Newton's laws of motion. However, if the electrical field is acting parallel to the charged particle, a result force will act on the object in the same direction as the motion so this will cause the particle to accelerate by changing speed now when the elect so when the electrical field is acting in the same direction as the particle motion it will cause the particle to accelerate by changing speed due to a resultant force which is acting upon it now remember the field lines are the direction a positive charge would take so this is very important so if a positive charge is moving along a field line parallel to a field Field line, it will speed up in the direction of the field line. However, if it's a negatively charged particle moving along the field line parallel to a field line, it will speed up in the opposite direction to that field line. Now, let's consider another particular example of a charged particle moving in a uniform field. If we consider that it's already in motion in this particular electrical field, it will wish to continue in that plane of motion. That, once again, is inertia. However, in this example, the electrical field is acting perpendicular to the charged particle. So now, a resultant electrostatic force will act on the particle, but at 90 degrees to that motion. So it will not affect the motion in that particular plane. It will cause acceleration by changing the direction of the motion. So when the electrical field is acting perpendicular to particle motion, it will cause the particle to accelerate by changing direction. It will be acting as a centripetal force 
on that particular particle. Now, once again, remember the field lines are the direction a positive charge would take. So if there's a positive charge moving perpendicular to the field line, it will deflect in the direction of the field line. But if it's a negatively charged particle moving perpendicular to a field line, it will deflect in the opposite direction to that field line. Now remember, in all cases, the charged particle will not change speed, it will only change direction. Because the force is acting perpendicular to motion, it's acting as a centripetal force. Now this is going to be very important because as this electrostatic force is placed on the object, it will act as a resultant force. So the positively charged particle will accelerate in the same direction as the field lines. Since the field lines show the direction of positive charge mo mo movement, whilst a negatively charged particle will accelerate in the opposite direction to the field lines because the field lines show the direction of positive charge movement. So if there's an uncharged particle in an electrical field, there'll be no acceleration as it feels no resultant force when in an electrical field from the electrical field because electrical fields only work on charged particles. Now, because this is in 90 degrees in this particular example, the, the resultant force is 90 degrees to the plane of motion this means it will only experience the resultant force in the vertical plane. So it means the charged particles will plot out a parabolic path in a uniform field because only one plane is experiencing a resultant force. The horizontal plane in this example is not experiencing a resultant force, it's only the vertical plane. But there is still inertia in the horizontal plane, so the parabolic path occurs as there's inertia in the horizontal direction and a resultant force in the vertical direction. The two effects combine to form a parabolic path. It's the same principle as to why an object will move in a circle with the centripetal force. Now, oh, again, if you've got a negative charge, it will also produce a parabolic path. However, it will be in the opposite direction to the one a positively charged particle would plot out. It's the exact same physics. So it means the particle will continue the same speed in the plane in 90 degrees to the field. But once again, if the motion of the charged particle is perpendicular electrical field, the electrical field accelerates the particle by deflection. It causes that charged particle to move in a parabolic path. Now, if the motion of the charged particle is parallel to the electrical field, the electrical force accelerates the particle by change in speed. So this causes the particle to maintain the same direction of motion but change speed. Now, it's important to note that in this example that's on the particular screen, the charged particle is accelerated in the vertical plane but maintains a constant speed in the horizontal plane. Now, if the particle was not moving when it entered the field, it wouldn't have inertia in one of the planes of motion, so therefore it would not carry out a parabolic path, rather it would just accelerate up or down dependent on its particular charge. So inertia in one plane causes a parabolic path to be taken by the particle. Now in a level physics, we'll only ever consider moving particles in electrical fields. Now we can actually work out the size of the deflection if the electrical field is perpendicular to motion in the path by comparing the charge to mass ratios of the different charged particles entering the field. So the higher the charge to mass ratio of the particle, the greater the deflection of the charged particle in the electrical field. So if we have learned in today's lesson, we can remember what electrical field strength is. We can remember the definition that electrical field strength is F over Q, and in a uniform field, it's E equals V over D, and we can map out the trajectory of moving charged particles entering a uniform electrical field initially at right angles to that electrical field. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we know what electrical field strength is, we can define it, we can describe it, we can calculate the electrical field strength for uniform and radial fields, and finally now, we can detail the trajectory of a moving charged particle as it enters a uniform electrical field. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at the motion of electrically charged particles in an electrical field and have a lovely day.